Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you all for being here. Uh, you know, for many years, uh, the bank shares tax was kind of a reliable source of revenue to the Commonwealth. It was very predictable in nature, uh, but it was also re reliable and predictable uh, for our banks. Uh, that was changed in 2013, uh, and for the last several years, we've talked about the changing rates that affect our local banks. And I know the governor's proposal last year uh, would increase the, the percentage uh, from 0.89 to 1.25%. Uh, that was supposed to be, and I'm, I'm going back to 2015, that was supposed to be revenue neutral in that adjustment, in that increase. Uh, in this year's proposal, he is reducing that rate back down to 0.99%, and he's also saying that that is revenue neutral as well. I was just wondering if you could explain to me how we've changed this rate three times and they're all revenue neutral of themselves. Well, one thing that is contributing to that is that when the governor proposed the one and a quarter percent rate, it was proposed to be collecting the amount of revenue that was lost since the proposal went into effect in 2014. Mm -hmm. So there, there was more than one year to collect to uh, meet that definition of revenue neutrality because it was going back and saying we didn't collect, we were trying to be neutral with what had been lost from the day that the bill went into effect. Now we are just saying in the current fiscal year. We're getting back to $350 million a year. We're ignoring the fact that we did not um, collect that money in the prior year or the year before that. Okay, so, ju so just let me, when we talk about revenue neutrality, I went back to, for, to a local bank and calculated the 2011 liabilities. And those liabilities were very similar to a C corporate tax rate that we've been discussing here all day. Uh, and that was pretty much normal. Um, they, again, that was the, at a time of, the numbers were pretty predictable. At 1.25%, that same bank's liability from 2011 to 2015 almost doubles. Now, the bank did have earnings over those four years, but the earnings, I mean, obviously there's tough economic times out there. Uh, there's, a, there's a very difficult regulatory environment from the federal government right now for banks. So that liability at 1.25 almost doubled uh, for this bank. You know, I'm, I'm just concerned that when we're, we're throwing around revenue neutrality, we're, we're, something's wrong with, with these percentages or the calculation because there is a, an effect back home at my local bank. Well, when we say revenue neutral, we'll, we're talking in terms of how much revenue does the tax raise for the Commonwealth. We're not talking about its impact on each bank. And the tax base was changed substantially between 2011 and where we are now. Um, it's my understanding that the banking industry proposed this, this change in the tax base, and they felt that um, the rate of um, 0.88 was um, going to be revenue neutral, and it turned out not to be. Collections, instead of being in the 350 million arena, were 307 million in 13, 14, and 281 million in 14, 15. So it has not been revenue neutral in that respect. Um, but as to differences between individual banks within the banking industry, that was an intended result of that piece of legislation. So, so obviously, if, if my bank would be paying twice as much tax dollars to Harrisburg, there's got to be other banks out there paying half as much on the same rate? I mean, maybe, maybe we need to look at the overall calculation because my bank would be paying twice as much at 1.25%. I mean, can we go back to the act and look and see maybe we shouldn't use the six-year average, maybe go back to the six-year averaging of capital and, 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 and look at the different changes that we made because Six -year average. it's very difficult to take this much capital and equity out of my local community. 
Um, yes, not to mention, so, so you multiply this by the three or four local banks and, and you take that away from their borrowing power um, and lending power, it, it creates a problem for my area trying to grow. The, the tax calculation doesn't use the six-year average anymore. That was that was the calculation. Well, that, well that's that what I'm replaced. saying. It, it, I always hear in revenue neutral. It's it's not revenue neutral for my bank. Maybe we should go back to that because that's more of a constant. Instead of a one-period spike, we're looking at a long-term uh, constant, and and that would probably help my banks in their calculation because the growth hasn't been that substantial, and it would be more predictable to them. I understand what you're saying. And just clarify, the 1.25, are we going, are we still trying to go retroactively back and collect that money from 2015? No, we're not. Okay. Okay, so that was a major concern too. If we're still going to try to retroactively go back and collect this tax, this increased tax of the 1.25, we'd really be taking capital away from my bank, which probably would put them in jeopardy with the federal government and their regulations that they, they enact on my banks as well. No, we're proposing to, to have the rate be 0 0.99 um, effective January 1st of 2016. That would raise 300 and, uh, um, well, it would bring the total up to the 350 million. The net additional revenue to the Commonwealth would be 37.4 million. The retroactive part of it is clarifications of interpretations of language. It is not the rate change. Okay, great. So, so that's that's good news. I mean, obviously, that rate increase really affected the the, the overall liability to my bank. So, so that's great to hear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's my last question.